Eudora Clinch died. I lowered myself onto the warped boards of the dock next to Thad and set the gift and gazette between us. My feet dangled above the water for an instant, then I thought better of it and removed my sneakers. I'd found them in the church donation box last week, and while they were in decent enough shape, the fit was a bit loose, and I didn't care to lose one or both to Chapman's pond. The murky water didn't seem to bother Ophelia much. The squirrel-chasing mutt who belonged to no one in Gifton, but was looked after by nearly everyone, barreled down the dock and leapt into the pond. Why are you reading the obituaries, Grady? Thad asked. It's creepy. I've got nothing else to read. I swung my feet back and forth. It's Sunday. The library's closed and I've read everything I checked out last week. And it wasn't like I could buy books when I ran out of something to read. Ophelia swam to shore and disappeared into the woods, chasing a squirrel. Thad yanked a narrow bag of shelled sunflower seeds from his back pocket and poured a few into his hand. Want some? No, thanks. I pushed my hair away from my eyes. I needed a haircut, but they cost money, and I wasn't about to trust Thad with a pair of scissors. He flipped open his sketchbook and began another floor plan. If Thad wasn't drawing houses, he was reading about them, or about architects. It was all part of his plan to become a world-famous architect himself. I wonder if Kuki's ghost is digging up flowers for her heavenly mansion. Eudora Clinch had earned her nickname, Kuki, due to the fact she had hauled a shovel with her wherever she went, and she dug more holes around town than a gopher on caffeine. Rumor had it, ages ago, her ancestors buried something valuable somewhere in Gifton, but no one had ever found any treasure, not even Kuki Clinch. Every so often, she'd dig up some poor soul's graveside flowers, claiming to have finally found the long-lost treasure, and then take them back to her house for replanting.